Hello and welcome everybody. This is the MATLAB and Simulink Racing Lounge. In today's episode, we are going to talk about real-time simulation and testing of a throttle valve controller. And for that episode, it's my pleasure to have Naga on board. Hello, Naga. Hi, how are you, Christoph? I'm fine. Um, Naga, as you are the first time presenter of the Racing Lounge here, could you introduce yourself uh, briefly? Sure. Uh, hello, everyone. This is Naga Pemaraju. I'm a senior application engineer. Uh, here at MathWorks Bangalore office. I uh, generally deal with modeling, simulation, and uh, real-time simulation aspects. Perfect. Thanks a lot. Well, and today's agenda is, is pretty clear. We already, already mentioned the, the title. Uh, it's about real-time simulation. It's about a controller, and it's about a throttle valve. So we will introduce you to the topic, and then we will have a, a quite intense hardware and software demonstration. And, well, as you're used to, at the end, we have the key takeaway session. Um, but Naga, before actually jumping into the content, we should give a, a kind of motivation. So we should explain to, to folks out there why we are doing that. Yes. Uh, so the main idea is to basically develop your control algorithms. Uh, so if you want to develop your control algorithms, uh, where do you start, right? So that's the question generally people have. And uh, once you develop your algorithm, where do you, how do you test it, uh, especially right. with, uh, with the real hardware? So that's the key uh, motivation for us. How can you test your algorithms with the real hardware? Exactly. Well, and this is a fair point where to start and how to do it. Uh, you should get, should basically get hands-on knowledge. That's that's a very important aspect for us. And we have chosen a throttle valve because that's inherent in all of your cars. And I've seen at Formula Student India in January, some teams thinking about that. And well, basically it's a nice example, but it's not the only example you can think of. There are a lot of control systems on your car. Um, we just picked the throttle because it's it's relevant, um, but it's not not excluding any others. Um, and I think this this is about it. We we can dive into the topic right away, Naga. Yes. Uh, so let me introduce you uh, the setup here. Uh, if you see, this is the my lab setup where I have. Uh, uh, my system connected to a mobile target machine, uh, which is the primary focus of this uh, of, uh, of this video. Uh, where uh, and this is the pedal. Uh, I've connected this and the throttle to a, a interface box here, yep. which is basically getting the supply. And all of okay. these are connected to the mobile target machine. Okay. If you a just quick question on that. Sorry, Naga, to interrupt. Um, you said it's a big real-time machine. So what is the difference to a microcontroller? Just for people to, to see the difference and see the commonalities. Uh, yes. Uh, so real-time uh, target machine here is something like an industrial PC uh, okay. uh, where you don't need to worry about uh, the RAM or uh, other aspects of the embedded controller. Uh, right. So you can purely concentrate on developing your controls algorithm, the logics, and make sure the logic is uh, working as you have designed it. Right. So this is a kind I, of a step before uh, embedded controller, I would say. Right. But but teams um, from the student teams are always concerned about lightweight design. This this piece of hardware is not particularly lightweight. But a, a, a microcontroller could serve the same purpose. But what you say for for testing and development, it's it's a lot easier. It's it's more seamless and well. You can just go for it. Exactly. Okay, perfect. Nice. So uh, uh, let me just quickly show you what is there in that interface box. It's uh, mainly the supply uh, with the hedge bridge and the power regulator. Uh, okay. You can see that's connected to uh, both pedal as well as throttle. So Nice. Okay. All Maybe right. A lot so of people that... recognize their system there or at least parts of it. So perfectly makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let me quickly show you, uh, you know, a quick overview of how things work uh, before we uh, dig in deeply into each and every portion of it, okay? So let me quickly uh, dive in to uh, show you how it works on an overall level. Uh, the screen you're seeing here is a Simulink Real-Time Explorer, where it's kind of a front end where you can change your gains and monitor how your signals are behaving uh, while you are uh, doing on your hardware. So it's Whatever you're doing in hardware, you can you know live see on the on your desktop. So the Explorer gives you an option to play with your parameters and view your signals. Right. So it's basically something like a, um, a front end for for development and debugging. Exactly. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let's see. Uh, get into the topic. Uh, I want to quickly touch upon the topic of real time simulation. So. 
yeah. uh, how that is uh, in v, v development cycle, right? So right. this is a V development cycle. Everyone knows the left, uh, left side is basically the development part and the right side is the uh, you know, testing phase of the cycle. Right. And Naga, uh, very uh, thanks a lot for, for having a nice illustration because uh, frequent viewers of the Racing Lounge will recognize the V diagram. I worked with a colleague, with Andreas, in the application engineer in Germany, um, and we, draw, we have drawn it on a whiteboard. But thanks so much. This one is so much nicer and, and explanatory. Um, so, but for you guys, it's exactly the same process. It's exactly the same. Exactly. <clears throat> So let's see where uh, we can apply this concepts of real-time simulation. One, during the development phase, uh, the system level design, that is called as rapid prototyping. And uh, during the testing phase, that is at the system level integration and test, that's called hill testing, right? Mm -hmm. What let's, does hill mean? Uh, hill is a hardware in the loop simulation. Uh, okay. I, uh, let, let's quickly dig into both of these and see how, uh, what's the difference between these two, right? Let's see uh, rapid control prototyping, and this is a very uh, common uh, block diagram where your controller is connected to the plan model, and then you're trying to give some inputs and verify it, right? So in the rapid control prototyping, uh, you have a target computer hardware, uh, like the one you have seen in my in the demo uh, in the initial video. Here, you are trying to replace the plan model with the real plant. Uh, and in the model, you can see uh, their plan model has been replaced by two blocks called I.O. outputs and I.O. inputs. These are nothing but the driver block sets. So now uh, the complete model, uh, that's a controller model, along with the driver block sets, is uh, downloaded, uh, on, is built and downloaded onto the target machine. And once it is done, uh, basically the target computer is talking to the real hardware and uh, the exchange of data and controlling, uh, everything is happening real time. So this is one part of real time simulation called as rapid control prototyping. Okay, and now I think I get why it's real time because usually Simulink and the operating system, for many cases, it, it's, it's Windows, it's not making sure that everything is running in real time. And this target computer makes sure that you have a real time system for the first time, right? Yes, that's the idea. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now let's uh, see what is a hardware in the loop simulation. Again, uh, you have the same uh, block diagram where you have a controller model along with the plan model. Uh, but now, in now you are having the real ECU on which your okay. uh, your controller is running. I mean, these people can identify this ECU or a microcontroller. It can be your TI microcontroller or, uh, for that matter, uh, even your Arduino. You know, if it's a local okay. hardware. Yeah, right, right, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then now uh, in the model, you replace this controller with, uh, again, some uh, driver, yep. blo uh, driver blocks. And the complete model, you are uh, trying to run on a target computer. And now both are talking to each other. You can control, uh, you know, you can check or test your algorithms, how, uh, how they are running, and you can create some test cases. And if you want to modify some of them, you can uh, do modify some of the logics as well. So uh, uh, this is a other po other portion of the real time simulation called as hardware in the loop simulation. Perfect. And when looking at the V diagram again, basically this hardware in the loop simulation is the second last process, and the very last process is well getting rid of your real time target computer and putting your actual hardware in, right? Exactly. So this okay. is kind of a step before the vehicle level testing, you can call. So once the ECU, uh, you know, goes through this testing of hardware loop simulation, uh, the same ECU is actually uh, taken and, uh, you know, uh, put it in the real vehicle and yep. ensure and test in the vehicle level. So uh, this gives you more confidence when you go to the final testing, final, final vehicle level testing. Got it. Perfect. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. Let's uh, go to Simulink Real Time, which is a uh, which is a tool which helps you to uh, take your models uh, to a, a, a real time environment. Uh, on the screen, you can see two uh, two windows. One on the left side is called the development computer, and on the right side is called the target computer hardware. Uh, so, in your development computer, uh, that can be like your laptop or your uh, lab PC, where you are 
uh, developing your Simlink models and you know doing the desktop simulations. Uh, basically, you generate code out of that and then compile it. And once you compile it, it uh, generates an object code. So that object code, uh, we are trying to run that on the target computer hardware. The link between both these computers is via Ethernet. Okay? Yeah. So this is how you take your uh, simulation from desktop to real time. Okay. Yep. So now let's quickly uh, see uh, how our models are there. And, you know, we want to get into hardware and software demonstration. Uh, I'll first show you about how my desktop simulation works, followed by the real-time simulation. Okay. Nice. Very interesting. Okay. Let's get started. Okay. So let me quickly open my uh, Simulink model. Okay. So here, uh, this is our uh, desktop simulation. Uh, let me quickly go through that. So I have a simulink, a simulated pedal input, which I'm trying to feed in to my controller and my controller is giving the command to my uh, throttle body, right? I'm taking the feedback from my throttle body uh, and giving it as a feedback to my controller, uh, which again, you know, take the error and uh, fine tune my command to the throttle. So let's quickly see what, how my throttle body has been modeled. Throttle body is uh, basically made of Simscape. Uh, Simscape, uh, and on this you can see I have a DC motor, uh, which is connected, uh, having my uh, mass spring damper and inertia connected to this, right? If I just go Basically, into... Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Basically, w w when I see that, um, I have, have two comments. Um, first one, um, in one of our previous episodes of the Racing Lounge, we've already modeled a, um, a throttle body. Um, we have used equations and modeled it in Simulink. So it's super cool to see how you can model it in Simscape so that you have a spring and a damper and you don't need to model the, the differential equations anymore. And my second comment on that is um, we have um, for automotive student teams, so also for formula student teams, we have a free of charge online training, which is focusing entirely on Simscape. So if you're interested in that modeling technique, and if you want to do something like lap time simulation or longitudinal vehicle dynamics, same as 3D suspension modeling, um, I strongly suggest that you have a look into that training. We will provide you with all the links. And I think that's it. Sorry to interrupt, Naga. You, you may continue with all the controller stuff and what else is in the model. Sure, yeah. Thanks for uh, letting the students know about that. Let's, and um, this is the DC motor. And if you see the DC motor, uh, I have this, my DC motor here, uh, and how I have, uh, you know, parameterized is just double click on it, and I can get the, com I can, you know, parameterize this block with, the, you know, uh, my resistance, inductance, or all those values, basically, you'll be getting this from your uh, motor specs. So you need not worry about uh, how to, you know, model right from scratch, already the block is readily available, and from the specs, you can, uh, you can parameterize this block. Yeah. And you can see this DC motor is uh, basically connected to hedge bridge and, uh, and that's also connected to the PWM basically. So the torque command, whatever you're getting from uh, the controller is, is you know, uh, fed through the uh, PWM voltage block and then given to the hedge bridge and then finally you're supplying that uh, voltage to the DC motor. Yep. Right? Mm -hmm. Uh, sense, yeah. Output of this DC motor is, again, as you have seen, connected to the mass spring damper uh, and inertia. And again, from here, you can actually sense what's my speed. Uh, so that's uh, this sense angle will help you. And uh, the, finally, I'm bas uh, basically normalizing it so that uh, I can take this as a feedback to my controls. Right. right. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we have seen about the... Uh, the throttle body model in Simscape. Now let's quickly see uh, how uh, the PI controller is developed. The PI controller is developed in Simulink. It's a purely a Simulink model where uh, the proportional gain and the inertial uh, gain, right, integrator gain here. And the input is one from the pedal position. The two is the throttle position taken as a feedback from the throttle body. I'm, right. taking, mm -hmm. I'm giving the error to both my proportional and integral uh, gains. And mm -hmm. finally, I'm getting the command out of this uh, PI, uh, PI controller. Makes sense. Yep. Right. So this is about uh, the model. And let's quickly run this. 
and see the output. So you can see I'm giving a step command. The, the blue one is my command and uh, the signal in the uh, yellow is my uh, the final output from the uh, body, throttle body. Just a quick question, why is it not overshooting? It seems like it's reaching the, the value one and then doing a, a loop, uh, but to the, to, the, to the bottom and not to the top. Right, so it's basically how you tune your PI controllers. Uh, okay. right? mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I've just shown you one, one aspect of how it's working, but again, you can fine tune your proportional integral gains. And if you really want uh, more, I mean, you can also get the derivative uh, you know, component into the loop and see how you can have your controller. So just for the test purposes, I've just used a PI here. I just want to show uh, show the students how this can be done. Perfect. Right. And just a quick reference, we've had a racing launch episode where Daniel and I, another application engineer, showed you how to, to tune PI and also PID, tune, uh, PID controllers. Okay. So this is uh, our desktop simulation. Uh, uh, now, uh, now I, I feel uh, the controller is okay enough to you know to go and test it in the with the real hardware. So what I'll be showing you next is uh, my uh, real time simulation model, where uh, I'll, I'll you know I'll remove the throttle body and you know just use a PI controller. So this is uh, your real time simulation model. Uh, so the main difference you can see is uh, I've replaced my uh, you know, the throttle body model with the real throttle body, but I'm just using the same PI controller. So whatever we right. have uh, seen earlier is the same block, but now uh, instead of the throttle body, we have the real throttle. So let's see what's in there. If I go, get inside here, you can uh, see, uh, I'm getting my PWM input from the controller and I'm actually feeding that to my output drivers. And again, I'm uh, reading something from my throttle body and giving it back as a throttle position to my controller, right? And inside this, inside this, you can see a uh, few blocks, the PWM generation and you know the setup blocks. These are basically the driver blocks provided by the speed code. Okay. And where where can you find that? Uh, just go to the library browser, and under the Simulink uh, real time speed code library you have uh, various I.O. cards, right? Under each and every I.O. card, uh, you have different drivers. Say, for example, I.O. 101 card has, uh, as you can see on the right side here, analog input, analog output, digital input, and digital output. These blocks are nothing but the driver blocks where uh, it helps you to connect, uh, you know, the signals coming to uh, to the model or coming from the model to your uh, target machine. So for each and every IO card, you have a setup block. So this way you are ensured you are basically setting up the right communication. Okay. Yeah, that looks pretty straightforward. Um, yeah, and here again we have and you know, the throttle bottle and all the input and outputs. Yep. Exactly, yeah. So here you can see uh, I'm getting my uh, throttle pedal input and you know um, taking that and uh, calculating the throttle position. So these are some of the things. I mean, using these drivers, you can directly get those uh, directly from the hardware, and you are reading that and feeding it back to your model. So, and one. Quick uh, one uh, change uh, which we need to do when we go from desktop to real time is we have to change the solver. Okay. Right. So if we go to the configuration parameters, generally in the solver type, uh, you would have used uh, a regular ODI 45 or ODI 15 solver. Yeah. A continuous uh, solver at the end. Exactly. So, but uh, since we are in the real time, uh, we need to ensure uh, we are uh, using the discrete solver here. Right, and uh, other thing is we need to uh, change to fixed step. So earlier the desktop simulation can run in a you know in a variable step as well, but for a real time simulation yeah. you need to change fixed step, and uh, in the core generation you need to change the system target file to slrt.tlc. So this right. ensures uh, your code that's being generated is uh, can work seamlessly on the target machine. 
Yeah, and, and just to comment here, so for example, if you're working with an Arduino, what you can do is to install a, a Arduino hardware support package, which will do several things. Um, it will in, install the same uh, a library, so you have all the blocks you require to talk to your Arduino, mm -hmm. and then you can also specify here as a target saying, okay, I want to go for an Arduino, and this is exactly ensuring the same. It's, it's ensuring that the code is compatible um, and efficient and performant on, on your microcontroller. Exactly. So that's what this .tlc files help you to do it. Right, right. Okay. So, so these are a few changes which you need to do uh, when you migrate from desktop simulation to uh, real-time simulation. So right now my model is ready and in the pedal input is nothing but just the, the feedback uh, I'm getting from the pedal, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So the next step is uh, we need to ensure that this model can run on uh, the target machine. For that, uh, we need to see if, uh, first we need to connect to the target computer. Uh, again, as I said, uh, the connection between my laptop to the target computer is via uh, Ethernet cable. So I've already done the setup. Now I just need to ensure whether I'm able to talk to the uh, target computer or not. Right. right. Okay. So uh, just uh, for, for the sake of the viewers, I've already uh, done the connection. Uh, let me show you uh, if it is uh, connected or not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, so I just need to do a ping test. So for that, uh, SLRT ping target is the command which you can type at the command prompt and it shows success here. So that means I'm able to talk to my uh, target computer now. So if I just open the model pack, uh, just click on the build button and here you can see uh, my build is happening and finally you can say the build process completed successfully. So that I okay, Build and that means uh, code generation. Exactly, code generated okay. and also uh, downloaded onto the target. Makes sense. Yep. So, so SLRT Explorer helps you to uh, uh, you, know, uh, you know work on your real-time model. Uh, let's see what we have on the right side. Uh, you, have, you can see the instrument panel where uh, we have a lot of instruments like the sliders and numerical data inputs. And here uh, the model, uh, you can see the one we have just downloaded, uh, the, the build, the code uh, and downloaded. So you can see that and the target PC is uh, ensures that uh, my system is connected to my yep. laptop. So here you can uh, modify your IP address or mask, subnet mask, etc. And we also provide you the scopes uh, like the host scope or a target scope where you can view the signals. And uh, I can show you one of the instrument panel which I've built. Uh, here is the okay. instrument panel. Uh, again, I've used all the instruments from the uh, right side which I've seen. Uh, let's quickly see a couple of signals. Uh, this is uh, my uh, throttle signal. And similarly, my, uh, my pedal signal, if I can bring that up here. So I can just rearrange as easily as you see uh, on the screen. And yeah, that's very handy. That's nice. It's very handy. So you can uh, customize it as you need. So that's the beauty of this. Uh, and once you have it, you can just click the pay and you can see it running. Uh, one other quick thing which I want to uh, tell, talk to you about is the on the uh, application side, you can have the complete model hierarchy. So whatever the model you're working in the Simulink environment, the complete hierarchy you can see. So basically this will have access to all your signals and parameters. So that way you can actually play with them uh, real time and also view the signals. So once you're ready, just click on play and you can see uh, that's working. Uh, you can s click on the enable to enable the motor, enable the uh, throttle. So here I'm just changing my uh, gains for, you know, I'm changing my proportional gain to see how the performance is and you know uh, you can see the throttle changing and the pedal changing. Uh, I I came to know um, by iterations that 16 might be a better way. Uh, but again, if I if the proportional gain is too low, say if it's about 2.5, then you can see some oscillations even at the you know at the big, even at the steady state. So so you can see without even changing uh, my pedal position, you can see the oscillations in my throttle. Right. 
Well, and very nice, we see the video and the, 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 the throttle was actually moving. So it's not just a desktop simulation, it's actually running on, on hardware. Exactly. So yeah. uh, it is connected to the hardware and you're actually, uh, you know, changing the game's life. So, mm -hmm. so uh, we have seen how we have, uh, you know, taken the model from desktop to uh, real time. Uh, so as a recap, let's see, we have a... Uh, target computer, right, uh, which is acting as a controller. Uh, it's, uh, it's taking the input from the pedal and trying to control the throttle position, and uh, we are able to monitor it, uh, you know, directly from our computer. Um, simulating real-time explorer. Yep. Using simulating real-time explorer. Yeah. But uh, you know, uh, for the uh, for the students out there, uh, if your algorithm is not so complex, you can consider, you know, using an Arduino. Yeah. Uh, which is a very low cost hardware to start with and check your controller. Exactly, uh, exactly. But, uh, but say if your algorithms get more complex, say for example, if you guys are using for uh, the hybrids or maybe electric drives where the controls algorithms are much more complex, uh, you might consider doing this real time simulations using some of this target computer hardware. Sure, well, this is probably one consideration teams will have, um, do some testing. Because, well, this real-time stuff is all about testing, different testing levels. And maybe it requires mo to move away from really low-cost hardware like Arduino. But there's a, a big variety of, of um, microcontrollers or ECUs that, that can talk to Methworks, can talk to MATLAB and Simulink. Um, but I think as an as a introduction to the topic, um, that, that's perfect. Um, we want to show you some hands-on knowledge that you can get started. Yeah. And everything else you will learn uh, by doing. And there's a lot of material available on our web pages and in, in the racing lounge as well. Yeah. Cool, Naga. Um, I think let's go to the key takeaways to 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 round it up. But the the recap was pretty good. Thanks a lot. Yeah. So uh, the the key takeaways, I mean, as I said, uh, real-time simulation and testing will help you mainly to increase your confidence in controller design. Right. So you can have your ideas, uh, you know, just quickly uh, build a model of your controller algorithm and test it. So that, right. this gives you more confidence in before you put it onto the real machine. Makes sense. And you can understand your system level behavior, right? Uh, this also well, will help perhaps you. Perhaps one, one thing to, to the system level behavior. So what we have seen, we have not always worked with the actual throttle valve. We have used the Simscape model for that just to tune the controller and then we have moved to hardware bit by bit. So it really helps you to understand your system, your, every part of the system because you have a model for that and you have also the real hardware for that. Exactly. Uh, and finally, as you have seen, I mean, it will uh, speed up your complete development process. Yes. As you have seen, yes. I mean, this models, uh, you know, I've shown you in few minutes, like how to change from my desktop to real time and finally connect to the hardware, right? So this will yep. uh, speed up uh, speed up your development process. Pretty sure, yes. So uh, you can also start to test control algorithms with the real hardware now. Yeah. Well. Um... I guess um, you're equipped now with the, the, the core knowledge. Um, that's unfortunately the end of the episode. Naga was very nice uh, working with you, was excellent, very well prepared. Uh, I think it's a really powerful episode for our viewers. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Thanks, Gustav. Perfect. Um, now let's move to the last slide um, of today's episode and this is basically this is a very complex topic and we are pretty sure you have questions you have um well tips for us um your feedback and please use our feedback channels so either you send an email to formal student at methworks.com or you join our facebook group and well start the conversation there um on methworks.com slash racing lounge you will find all episodes on the racing lounge and a lot of further info um, as well as the software offer and if you do use our software um, we would be um, happy if you use our logo on your car and on your reports and materials at that point um, thanks for watching guys um, hope to see you next time naga thanks again and bye 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 bye